Hello and welcome or welcome back. Uh, today I'm talking all about the options or the the Maverick lifestyle as it will be rebranded. And it's a new project, um, an evolving project uh, that I have going on. In summary, we're going to talk about today my move to Latin America and my idea for this uh, project. I'm going to be documenting my journey. Can I create a an upper class income um, through minimal investment using my options or options trading business? So this is what I'm doing. I'm creating a new fund, a carve out fund that will be purely for uh, income via trading options. And I have the targets that I'm going to demonstrate or outline today and we're going to see what happens. So this is the new and improved version um, of what used to be the Options Mavericks will now be the Maverick Life. And I'm going to talk you through that today. Uh, if you're already a member, this is going to answer some of the questions that I've had in the group. All right, guys, without further ado, let's get into it. Disclaimer, this is just my opinion. Anything that you hear me say on the internet or anywhere else is my opinion. It's just my thoughts, me sharing and documenting them with the world. They could be completely wrong. They could be completely right. I warn you now, uh, do your own due diligence. None of it is advice. I'm not a financial advisor in any way, shape or form. This is just me being me doing me and sharing it with the world. That is it. The rest, uh, you're on your own. So you make your own decisions. I want to make I really want to stress that, that you are responsible for the decisions which you make. So what's the whole Maverick deal, right? So guys, really, it's about the idea of being a Maverick in my life in certain points. Uh, I've been a Maverick. I've gone against the crowd. Uh, a lot of people have thought I was crazy. Uh, that many of them still do. I've done some weird things, made some big decisions seemingly um, at the drop of the hat. And so being a Maverick for me is just about living life on your terms to a degree. So you have to be a responsible citizen. It doesn't mean being selfish. Like I see a lot of people out there trying to live this digital nomad life. All they're doing is they just don't want to work. And so they save a little bit of money. They're, they're massive tight asses and they just live life as cheaply as possible. But as long as they don't have to work, they tweet about how life, how great their life is not having to work. That's not going to be me. It's never been me. Um, I've hit some, hit some targets in my life. I want to live a certain way. That is what being a maverick is about, okay? So I'm blending or trying to blend freedom with responsibility. I'm not running away from a life that I hate, okay? I'm trying to create um, and have created a, a dream lifestyle. So that's something that's important, uh, I believe. A life of options, uh, not just trading options like financial options. Optionality is a, its own philosophy, its own concept. And so I want a life of options. Um, and what does that mean in terms of the image of my life? Where do I see myself? Well, a true, a true life of freedom for me, being a maverick, is not going where life is cheap. And that is where you get your freedom. To me, it's got to be somewhere that I really, really enjoy. So where do I want to live? When do I want to do this? How much time do I want to spend in a given location? What do I want to be doing there? And with whom do I want to be doing those things? Those are the questions that I ask. And the idea is that I create my life and my lifestyle to support um, whatever it is that takes my fancy in answering those four questions. Simple as that. So earlier in the year, I went through lots of different countries to test out like a semi-retirement. And I was really, really anxious in a lot of times with nothing to do and, and some places I like better than others and all the rest of it. So it's not about having nothing to do. That That's a complete lie. It's not about not working. It's about me doing what I want to do, creating things of value to people. Um, and at the same time, being able to do that in things that I'm interested in and that, um, and that gives me that sense of zest that I want to get up in the morning and do certain things. So a life of options, that's what being a maverick is. It's not about being cheap. It's about creating a life of options. And there's a certain amount of servitude uh, required for us as human beings to be happy. So I want a certain lifestyle standard. And I, I don't want to be another person out there that's, you know, trying to just, you, you know, if staying in hostels is your thing, that's great. There's no problem with that. But just Instead of doing that, I would I would rather have spent, and I did spend my 20s, instead of doing like European backpacker trips, I created businesses and then I sold businesses and I succeeded and I failed and I did all of that creation, creation, creation to achieve a certain standard of lifestyle. And the way that I look at it, if I cannot sustainably 
retire from a a normal lifestyle, let's say, um, to a life of freedom. If I can't have a certain lifestyle, then it's not worth it. I need to keep working, keep building until I hit that um, hit that level of lifestyle. The Substack project, what is it all about? So initially, I just decided that while I was away that I would start sharing my trading ideas and things that I've been doing for a while, such as earning income from options trading. And so it was just me originally sharing an idea I thought was interesting every week. And then I thought, well, there needs to be more to it than that, because how do people manage different trades and their positions and a whole portfolio? So I just arbitrarily came up with an idea. That's all it was and said, okay, well, if I take 50K and I share 50K's worth of trades every week and I share what I do, how I manage the positions, that's probably a lot more, I guess, interesting and helpful to the subscribers or wonderful. Uh, but it was completely arbitrary. Um, and now I, I'm trying to put a little bit more meaning to it. So I said to myself, well, I run a you know part of my businesses. One of my businesses is running a, a one-man insurance company. How would I go about this challenge? Let's say like a reality TV show where um, I do this business trying to create an upper-class income. And obviously we'll get into what that means in a moment. So this, this is the whole idea. I've created a new account, a new in my brokerage platform purely for this Substack project uh, and it will be tracking things uh, minute by minute as we go. So an upper class income, what does it mean? Is it possible for someone to get there? How hard is it to get there? And what are some tricks uh, that someone might use to get there a little bit quicker if they just change their mentality? Let's take a look. So in Australia, I grew up in Australia, uh, upper class income, according to Google at the moment, is somewhere around $330,000 per year. That's Aussie dollars. It's roughly at the moment 220-ish US dollars. So me running my small business, for me to make that um, was possible, definitely. But I had to work like a dog, like an absolute dog. Uh, we're talking at least 60 hours a week. And that's before all the... This, we're just talking top line uh, minus, um, I guess we'll call it EBITDA of 330000 That's not net profit. That's EBITDA before some extra expenses and, and of course, taxes. So obviously, that's a high-ish hurdle for most people to, to achieve. Um, to Australia, it's definitely possible to generate um, a high level of income, but it's a lot harder. The median salary uh, this year is somewhere around four thousand, four and a half thousand US dollars per month. Uh, so, how does that compare to somewhere else in a place that I would like to visit? So, my good friend, the Bowtie Mara, uh, an expert in Argentina, which just so happens to be one of my favorite countries uh, from my travels. What is an upper class income in Argentina? It's considered around about eighteen hundred dollars uh, per month. Now, very difficult to measure that accurately in Argentina because it's a cash economy. But if you add, you know, 20 or 30%, it's somewhere around that ballpark and it gives me a, a starting point. So my strategy, what's the whole point here? Well, for me to generate an upper-class level income in somewhere like Argentina, obviously $22,000 a year is a lot easier to achieve, all else being equal, than $220,000 per year. Remember, we're talking US dollars. So somewhere where I can be in the top 1% um, generating $22,000 a year US would be maybe Argentina, Colombia would be very similar, um, certain parts of Southeast Asia, so on and so forth. You take your pick in terms of whatever you like best. My strategy will be uh, to create this one-man insurance company, okay, um, carving out a specific uh, fund, funding it with working capital, uh, and trading options with a targeted return of 33% per year annualized. So that's something that if you've been a subscriber, you'll know I've been able to hit these uh, targets relatively comfortably. So that'll be the targeted return that I'll use. So the plan is, okay, well, if I want to hit 22,000 a year and I can get a return on capital of about 33% per year, I'll need somewhere around sixty-six thousand uh, per year, sixty-six thousand seven hundred sixty-three dollars to be exact, in working capital to generate that amount of income. That would be the minimum. Okay. So therefore, what I've done is 
I've set up, I've moved the current trades. There are two trades still in progress. I've moved them over to this new account now that I've learned how to do that. And I'm funding this new account with 66,000 US dollars of working capital, okay? This is nice because I can separate everything out and I can share this project. It will be run as an insurance business to generate this targeted amount of income. My long-term investments, my other businesses can just do whatever they do. Okay, so that's kind of interesting, I think, an interesting project to share. Now, there's no reason why you have to move. In theory, you can do it from anywhere in the world. Okay, that's what life is like as a maverick. I've just, I'm not particularly sold in terms of the direction in which Australia is heading. Um, the dollar is getting absolutely pumped. There are lots of different reasons. I probably will spend a decent amount of time here every year because my parents are getting old, my family's here, and so on and so forth. But to illustrate the point in terms of what it would take to do this in Australia, upper class or 1% income, whatever you, you know, they're not terms I use, but that's just how people think of these things. Income per year would be around 210,000 US dollars. And that's just the exchange as of when I'm recording this video. So how, do, how would I generate that if I can have a, a targeted return of 33% per year? How much would I need as working capital? Well, I'd need $636,363 in working capital. So I'd need 10 times as much. So obviously it's possible. The issue then would be, you know, you, the, your taxation, your cost of living, et cetera, et cetera. It, it just start, you simply look at the math and you say, well, then if I did that, I'd have to take money out from other businesses. I'd have to take... Uh, sell some of my longer term investments and move them in and use that as working capital. And it just, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me uh, personally. I like living, um, I've enjoyed my time in Latin America. So I figure what the hell, it'll be a great adventure. Some people may hate that idea and they just have to do it in their home country. Totally fine. Um, completely up to you. This is just what I'm doing because obviously the barrier to entry is much lower. And I think people can relate a lot more to 66 grand working capital than they can to 636 grand. That's just my take on things. So that's the idea. That's the strategy I'm trying to accomplish, or that, that's what I'm trying to accomplish. The strategy in order to help me get there will be uh, trading options as an insurance business. Okay. The tactics, how am I going to do this? Let's really break this down. To hit 33% per year, I will be aiming for 2.75% average monthly return. It doesn't mean I can hit it every month. Some months might be up, some months might be down, so on and so forth. But over a yearly average, that's what I'd need or somewhere around 0.69% per week. Okay. I'm trying to balance, um, trying to strike a balance between a business like return on invested capital. This is not a long-term uh, in set and forget investment. I'll have to balance market risks, withdrawal needs, potentially. It doesn't really apply in my case, but for the sake of keeping things a little more real, let's say, I'd have to to balance that. How often do I need to withdraw cash? All these sorts of things. So whilst I've been hitting returns slightly higher than that recently, if I if I drop my targeted return, I can have a little bit more margin of safety in the types of trades that I make, and I can still hit my targeted income levels and return levels uh, and return levels. So that makes sense. Trading options, I view it, you guys will know if you're already subscribed, subscribers, is trading insurance on publicly owned, on publicly listed companies, companies that I want to own and in most cases already do own in my longer term portfolio. This is just a way that I can generate more income. So if I spend all the, all the time and effort to value a certain company, I form an opinion as to its value, I buy the thing in a long-term account and it just sits there and compounds. Instead of me going and finding another trade, if that company has an options market and its options market is reasonably priced, and I think that I can generate more income, it makes sense to trade more options on, on an asset that I already know well, rather than trying to reinvent the wheel. So that's the way that I approach it. I got my big longer term portfolio, master fund, if you want to look at it that way, and then a smaller insurance business shooting for higher returns, more frequent trades, and to generate more income-focused returns. It'll be a blended approach, uh, whereas I've usually just sold 
um, been mainly on the sell side in the options maverick up until now with more working capital i'll be buying and selling insurance so buying what i think is cheap insurance maybe call options maybe put options on things i think are expensive i'll be shorting puts i'll be buying covered calls uh, on a lot of dividend stocks which has been a strategy that's worked extremely well this year and then buying or selling spreads so selling credit spreads buying um, probably call spreads normally are, are what work out best for me and so there's there's a mixed approach and it's going to be much more dynamic so it won't be as simply it won't simply be the same thing every week because the market will change Okay, so it's impossible for me to sit down and say, this is the process, this is the strategy. No, these are the tools that I'll have at my disposal. I will apply those as best I can to hit these targets. And I'll use certain tools at certain times, depending on market conditions and, and depending on what volatility is on offer in the options market. So the idea here, um, I'll be trading such that the portfolio gives me that 33% return on 66K per year. Um, and we'll see what happens. I think it'll be an interesting project. Uh, if it takes your fancy, link to the Substack will be in the description. You can have a free trial, obviously, um, and see how you like it. Uh, otherwise, you can, yeah, you can just sign up for a, a free email and you can get um, quite a bit of good value, I would, I would argue, uh, via the free list to give you, um, I guess, an over-the-shoulder view. Here's some access to, to premium content. You'll also get access to my other publication for free, the ROI Club. And here I, I break down performance, what it is that I'm doing. Every week you get a weekly wrap-up. So we see how the previous week's trades did, where they're at. Uh, you get a, an idea as to what the profits I made, how much capital was needed to make them. Uh, how things are compounding, what rate of return I am or am not achieving. It's all there, guys. And then, of course, every week you will see something that looks like this. Obviously, I've blocked it out because this is what people pay, pay for. Um, the trades I'm making, how I'm entering them, what sort of um, profits they are expected to achieve. And then so I give that out a week in advance. And then at the end of the week, we do a weekly wrap. So every week here you've got last week, this week, um, what happened with the trades? What did we make? Are we carrying trades through or am I carrying trades through as they expire? And in a moment, I'm about to record this week's video, which will be the trades I'm making for the week ahead. So that's that. I hope you, um, I hope it caught your interest um, and I'll be interested to see what you make of this. Leave your comments in the description. Uh, I'll do my best to answer them, but in summary, I would uh, think of this as a, a reality TV project. Uh, I don't know how it's going to end up. I have an idea, obviously, given past performance, but that is no indication of future. Um, yeah, if there's something that you're interested in, by all means, put it in the comments section. I'm excited for this new and improved version of the publication project. And so I hope you are too. Look forward to hearing from you. Do your own due diligence, and I'll see you in another video shortly. Take care, guys.